The termite, well described. I'm sure that most of you know that the termite is one of the masters in air circulation. The inside is always 86 degrees and 61% humidity. Fahrenheit I switch to. They're masters. But here is the building in Sweden where it is used in cold climate. We always see this for a hot climate. No, 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 cold climate works exactly the same. And here you see the chimneys. This is a school. And what happens is that every hour the complete air in the whole school building is refreshed. Winter and summer. What do you think happens to the kids? What we do now is we close off the buildings to save energy. So we can get sick easy. Because one coughs, everyone coughs. So we can trap the dust mites into the carpets. So we can secure that the charged uh, particles from our printers and computers are nicely inhaled by every child. Or that we now start investing in uh, air filters so that we can take those particles out. And indeed, undo the bad that we have done. No, we have to do good. So this building, by having fresh air coming in, and of course it has the intake, the air intake, so that the temperature outside at minus 25 still comes in at 16 degrees Celsius. And all it depends is a little mathematical model that emulates what the termite has been doing for millions of years. Before, there were no mathematical models, so you needed an architect who was basically risking his reputation or her reputation. Because we didn't exactly know how it was going to work. But when you have the right data, and we simulate it correctly with the materials that we choose, then we're going to be in a position to model this perfectly. What's the result of having fresh air day in, day out in your classroom? This school has the highest academic rates, grades of the country. Because fresh air is what kids need, their bodies need it. We cannot put them into a closed up building where the air is recirculated continuously through air filters. Where, by the way, we're running the high risk of Legionella diseases and therefore we will be using some harsh chemicals to secure that no Legionella will ever stick to any of those filters. And I guarantee you when the school is off in the summertime, you will have moles growing everywhere, not in this building. Health for our children in the classes is the most important priority we can have. And on top of it, this is the nice news, it's a lower capital investment, lower operational costs, and lower carbon emissions. So we did what we wanted to do anyway, according to the energy efficiency principles, but in the meantime we put health as the priority. But we need to correct this, because sometimes it gets too cold and the system doesn't work very well. Architects always say, oh, south-facing. Yeah, to do what? To keep the heat out? No problem. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Think about this. When we have a force coming at us from nature, we go against it. No, harvest it. Take it in. I mean, this is what Aikido is, this is what Judo is, this is what we all should be doing. We should harness those forces. So what's happening with this here? Again, you see the black and white? We're playing again with black and white. But what's happening here? Hot air, sorry, cold air, comes in here. The black are old recycled tires. The flickering shine is aluminum. So air comes in with aluminum and black tires, it heats up. The air goes in here and just sucks right up. And of course when it's winter, this gives heat. What does it do in the summer? It gives more heat. What do you do when you have more heat? You? Take off your clothes. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ford Motor would love that. <laughs> what do you do when you have hot? You create cold. 
with the heat exchanger. So basically, this gives you hot air in the wintertime and cold air in the summertime. And what do we have? A black wall, period. And a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is right in there. The beauty of the heat exchanger on top is that cold air tends to go downwards. And when the hot air goes up, well, then the hot air is expanding, and then the way you design it, it will flow inside with the, with the force of the expansion of the air. This is your air conditioner of the 21st century. Actually, no, it's the air conditioning system that's been operating for millions of years. But General Electric, Daikin, and a couple other companies thought it was more profitable to sell you these machines, which need maintenance, which guzzle your energy. And how many of the research department of General Electric and Daikin, or Mitsubishi, is actually interested in this? None. This is undermining the business. The cash flow, the maintenance, the service model. And so what we're realizing is that by something that is as simple as this, we're eliminating a $40 billion business, which we shouldn't have had in the first place. And here we are injecting CO2. This was called unrecycled, unrecyclable glass. It's green, brown, and white together. There you see the machine from Albuquerque, the new machine installed by Earthstone in Albuquerque on the landfill. And they're producing glass foam. Glass foam can be used to build houses. Now, let's take this logic a little further. This is the houses in Sweden. That's not from Earthstone, that's from a factory in Belgium. Totally separate from Earthstone, but some of you may know Earthstone. What is happening here? We're taking glass, and glass is like aluminum. It has a lot of embedded energy. And so that glass and that embedded energy is reconverted by injecting CO2 into a building material, which is a structural building material. Structural building material. It means it replaces steel, reinforced concrete, and cement from recycled glass. So our program in Bhutan is that Coca-Cola went to the Prime Minister of Bhutan and presented a report about this stick to explain to the Prime Minister why Bhutan should permit them to use PET bottles as an ecological solution versus glass bottles. So I told to the Prime Minister, let them talk to me. They wouldn't, but so I talked to the Prime Minister. And as a result, is Bhutan is at the point of banning all plastic bottles. Because, because of this, sorry, because of this. When you have a glass structure, glass foam structure, then you have no vermin, no rats ever coming into your building, no molds will grow in there. It's an insulator and a structural material all at the same time. And you're recycling glass and you get even paid to take the glass. Isn't that nice? You remember what I said, multiple benefits? Now, this is multiple benefits. And so for Bhutan, instead of having to import the pellets, sorry, instead of having to import the PET bottles from, with Coca-Cola from India, it now has to come in glass. And yes, we accept that it's 16% lesser energy efficient on that operation. But the system is that we don't have to import anymore the reinforced concrete steel. And that saves a lot more energy. And on top of that, with solely 5 million bottles, we have a break-even for the factory. And in Bhutan, that means for 100,000 people in the country, a factory. There are 850,000 people living in Bhutan. That means we have minimum eight factories generating jobs. And this is how I share with the Bhutanese that the gross national happiness can go hand in hand with growth in the economy on the condition you choose the right technologies, the right business models. And you go for both. Analyze them both. Don't say that I have to give up a little bit of this to get a little bit of that. And Bhutan has been saying no to a lot of things. No to plastic bags. No to smoking in the country. No to junk food. 100% tax is imposed on junk food now in Bhutan. 100% tax. 